Welcome to another in the series of Mystical Perspectives. I'm Reverend Cindy Paulus, and I've been sharing different affirmations, thoughts, and meditations based on Dr. Paul Leon Master's book, Spiritual Mind Power Affirmations, which is available on metaphysics.com. And I am starting a new section here on health and well-being, which is um, very interesting. It's interesting, today's subject almost sounds like something you'd think about on the 4th of July, <laughs> Independence Day. Um, it's achieving independence of mind and soul. And I really didn't quite know how to delve into this one. It took me a week of really looking at how deep the subject goes, um, looking at influences, codependency, um, things we haven't faced in our life, um, to making ourselves totally connected to our inner self and highest self, rather than outside influences. It's a very deep subject. And we're going to start with the affirmations, and then I'll do a meditation and uh, a little talk about it as well. Some things to ponder upon. Starting with the first one here, auric protection. Every day, I take a few moments to imagine and visualize a white protective light of God's presence surrounding my body with protection from outer energy influences from the minds and souls of others. This is an interesting one because we're getting all of this. The more we do online work, the more we are um, distracted actually by what we see uh, from the different social media forces. We may not be aware of what we're taking on. It's so subtle sometimes, but um, if you're an empath especially, this is a good one for you to do. So repeating auric protection. Every day, I take a few moments to imagine and visualize a white protective light of God's presence surrounding my body with protection from outer energy influences from the minds and souls of others. So there's always a, a it's a good thing to do actually when you start your day. You get dressed, right? When you meditate, you put white light, this beautiful protective shell of auric, beautiful white energy surrounding you and protecting you. I do it around my car. I definitely do it around planes when I'm flying. Um, it's a beautiful white protective light. You can make it as large as you wish. You can even add gold colors and violet colors in there. Make it creative. It's a work of art. The next one's meditation, which is so important, of course. Through my daily practice of meditation, my conscious mind receives intuitive guidance from God's presence to establish or maintain independence of my mind and soul. So we each always encourage you to meditate in the morning and if you can at night even in the day maybe at the end of your yoga or maybe during your yoga practice maybe it's a walking meditation even but to add to that you can put um, in there this affirmation through my daily practice of meditation my conscious mind receives intuitive guidance from God's presence to establish or maintain independence of my mind and soul. So this is again turning yourself over to the higher will of God. And we all know when we meditate how the mind goes on and on and on. And it doesn't matter how many years you've been meditating. I've been meditating over 50 years. The mind will always go on and on and on. Sometimes completely um, beyond your influence, or maybe it was a show you watched, or a movie you watched, or maybe it was something you saw on Facebook or a video on YouTube. So 
again, when you go into meditation, this is part of the mystical practice is to connect with that one source of all energy, with God, right? The next affirmation is purposeful independence. I recognize that my having real independence is being in tune with God's purpose for me in this lifetime, which keeps my mind and soul independent from the influence of others. Okay, this combines a couple of points here. Purposeful independence, repeating this. I recognize that my having real independence is being in tune with God's purpose for me in this lifetime, which keeps my mind and soul independent from the influence of others. So in a way, this is just getting yourself back on track. It's easy to get in a plateau state and the comfort zone. And sometimes you just get into a place where there's all these other bombarding things taking place that really drain your energy and you're not even aware of it. Except maybe in your dreams or maybe when you can't sleep at night. <laughs> so this is a good one on purposeful independence. The next one is vigilance. Every day, I retain a conscious vigilance not to lose the independence of my mind and soul by allowing others to influence or control me. So, how are you going to be vigilant? You know, we're busy, we're at work, there's things going on, um, you've got a million things to do. So, there's this other higher objective observer or watcher, the higher self, that you can let watch as you're doing what you're doing in the day. And it can give you guidance. Repeating this, I say, the vigilance one here, every day, I retain a conscious vigilance not to lose the independence of my mind and soul by allowing others to influence or control me. And, gosh, we think about now about mind control. It was a big subject, you know. Um, <laughs> big Brother. All right, we have the first concept of Big Brother's watching, right? Um, but there are many influences beyond Big Brother, of course. Energy influence is going on which can constantly be bombarding your energy, your auric field, your mind, and yourself. So this is the vigilance that goes beyond your conscious mind. It's a conscious vigilance beyond your mind, right? The next one's oneness. I recognize that the greater my oneness with God, the more inner power I have working within me to establish and or maintain the independence of my mind and soul. So how does that work? A oneness and the same time independence. So let's repeat this affirmation. I recognize that the greater my oneness with God, the more inner power I have working within me to establish and or maintain the independence of my mind or soul. So you're plugging your power into God, the source, right? Um, you're in a room that's dark and there's no light. What do you do? You turn on the light switch, right? <laughs> Want a little more light? Get plugged in. <laughs> mm. If you want a little more energy, go to the energy source that God within you and in that initial sight is this original oneness because we're all part and created from the one creator. The next one's release. I recognize that to be truly independent in mind and soul, I release all mental and spiritual dependency on everything and everyone and instead, 
manifest independence through my oneness with God's presence within me. So God is your life partner, right? God is your creator and you're the co-creation. And this is the one source that's the greatest source to be connected to. I'm going to repeat this one. It's very powerful. I recognize that to be truly independent in mind and soul, I release all mental and spiritual dependency on everything and everyone and instead manifest independence through my oneness with God's presence within me. Now, you know, people who begin the mystical path go directly to the source and learn from the greatest teacher, which can be Buddha, the Christ. I'm a Buddhist and I'm also a Christian, but I'm a mystic Christian. But I don't follow the realms of the typical religion. I go to the source and ask for that source to guide me. And that's going to that free place within you that's independent of the other rules, but it's God's rules. It's the one rule of the highest source guiding you. The next one's karmic ties. I release any and all karmic ties to others that my mind and soul may manifest my independence of God's spirit for me in this lifetime. Now this goes into the codependency. It goes into the very deep subject of karmic ties. You may have had a relationship with someone for lifetimes. Many, many lessons to learn, many rivers to cross. And that goes so deep. And maybe now you're ready to be free of those karmic ties. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're through with a relationship. It just means you're not subject to being controlled in that relationship by someone else's will because you're going to the one source of God. Karmic ties here again. I release any and all karmic ties to others that my mind and soul may manifest my independence of God's spirit for me in this lifetime. Okay, the next one's thinking. I am an independent thinker, influenced only by the wisdom thought process of witness of God's presence within me. Sorry about that. I got a little frog in my throat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Repeating that one. I am an independent thinker, influenced only by the wisdom thought process of oneness in God's presence within me. So here we're talking, this is one of the only affirmations really talking about your thought process influenced. So what your thought process can be influenced by many people you consider to be a teacher, or in some cases people make heroes out of celebrities, right? Um, and it's kind of sad when you see um, young people dressing like, you know, um, they, what they want to be is a superstar like their hero that they see. You can see kids completely doing a whole dance act of their famous person, celebrity they're following. Um, and what happens? What happens to their true self? I mean, they always want to be that other self and that other person that they're following. Um, and it's sad because the other person is <laughs> may have a pretty messed up life. Um, so thinking again, I am an independent thinker influenced only by the wisdom thought process of oneness and God's presence within me. That's going to the source for your thought. And you might sometimes have to do a purification process because we do get so cluttered. I mean, just like spring cleaning, right? Think of what's in your mind. <laughs> And it might need a lot of cleaning from the clutter that's around. 
The last one is soul. I am an independent soul whose spirituality is controlled by the ultimate true life within me of God's presence. Repeating that, I am an independent soul whose spirituality is controlled by the ultimate true life within me or God's presence. So those are the affirmations um, and I'm going to move along into some talk a little bit about some of these ideas that come up with this. It's a very subtle thing how our subconscious mind is influenced. And it's influenced by sound, it's influenced by light, it's influenced by what we see on TV, it's influenced by what we read. Um, and then there's the universal influences that happen, the cosmic influences. But on top of that, there is the collective unconscious. And then you get down to your personal life and you have your life partner, you have your friends, um, you have the people you work with. And it's really important to be aware of how we are affected by those things. Um, just like we said, put an aura of light around you in the morning. You might need to do that at work as well. Um, but on the material plane, we do create a lot of attachments and bonds to things that we use and need in our life. And of course, these in relationships are all right, but what if they are your complete resource system? What if you're allowing someone to totally influence your life and you're not even aware of it? What if your person that is influencing you is almost controlling what you're saying and thinking? You know, this happens more than you might be aware of. Um, there's so much abuse that goes on in the world and there's so much control that goes on in the world that we're not even aware of, right? So when we're going into meditation and making contact with our inner highest self, our soul, and then connecting to the Holy Spirit and then connecting to God or the one source of all, we might really all of a sudden find that our energy field is changing. And we may see that the person who controls us is sensing that, wow, um, maybe I'm not having as much control here. And they may actually subconsciously sense this and try to have more control. But this is where we learn. Again, this is where we have the karma and release the karmic ties. We're here to clear up our karma. We're here to learn lessons in life. And some of those things have gone on a long time. And we can hold on very, very tightly to our control and our influences and our codependence and our identity with those people. It's very easy to get attached to these things, right? Um, and, and your lifestyle and your house and your car and your dog and your, your possessions, it's, it's all this thing. But the more you have, the more you have to work to take care of and maintain those things and the more you're identified with it and the more it takes away really from who you really are the more light that you have, the more love that you have from God, the more you can count on, find that you are related and have a relationship to that one source, then you can free yourself from needing the outer resources. Now, it's not easy, especially if it's lifetimes of karma. And it can even change your life in many ways, usually for the best. <laughs> Um, but it can be not an easy situation to break free of codependence, right? Um, I wrote this um, when I was thinking on this subject. What must we do to be independent and free of any of that negative energy? The dark shadows of the mind and all the doubts that we might find. Can we just let them go and see that they have no real power to take control? We don't really have to be subject to our ego because love can overcome that fear and 
course there's forgiveness which is one of the greatest tools to use here and we can use that tool to finally heal all the hurts and the pain that's inside but first we must really love ourselves and forgive any of the mistakes we made and who we're dependent upon and what we had to use to get through in this place and there's so many ways we use this to learn but in time we do get strong enough to grow and learn and then we awaken and with the breath we face all the roles and the rules of the game and the truth of what it takes to live here and love this human race you know in a higher perspective our souls are free but it's really easy to become trapped in the cage of our own making, our own choices. The illusion, the Maya illusion, the karma, what we thought we came here for, but we grow in time. And as we grow, we might still be stuck in the old things that held us. I wrote this also. Oh, this cocoon that holds me, locked within, aching to break free of the limitations so I can begin again with that heavenly rays of light that bring the vision and insight to that great passageway to take so I can release any of the blocks that I imagine are holding me. And there is in my soul's memory that deepest DNA, a way to be free, to remember the Creator holds that key. And life changes form constantly, from a cocoon to becoming a butterfly, and it's a butterfly to dance into the light, till we finally find we're free. And then what do we do, right? Then we go back to what our true purpose is and how we can still maintain that connection, our inner light and our love, and make our purpose in life a reality. Let's do a meditation here, taking a few very deep, clearing breaths, breathing in slowly, holding it a second in that pause, and releasing and breathing out any blocks, any ties that you don't need anymore. Breathing in light, holding and releasing and letting go and letting God be in control. Breathing in deeply, going to the soul, letting that light of the soul come down and fill every single cell of your being, your head bathed in light, your third eye with that violet light, your throat chakra glowing with blue, that heart and soul inside of you, that green light filled with the pink blossom of love, the love that heals, the love that holds you, the love that gives you strength. Breathe that in, see and feel that love. Realize that you can be free to choose your purpose in life. You can be a force for good. You can choose love. You can forgive the past. Breathe in that power. And now in a moment, release and forgive all that's held you, all the things that have hurt you. Feel your heart healing and releasing and being whole and forgive, forgive, forgive yourself, forgive others. And feel yourself becoming an awakened channel for God's unlimited light, that brilliant light of a million suns fills you now, makes you whole. Feel the love that grows and grows and grows till you are sending that love out to the entire planet, helping others to free the chains of Maya and karma seeing that light and that peace circling the planet and coming back to you a hundredfold 
And now let that light and the very source of that light fill you with the strength to be free and independent, to have the power to be who you really can be. Let that love heal any of the hurts. Let that love that is in the heart of God come into you and be your guiding light and give you the answers to all solutions. Turn your life over to the greatest will of God and let go of any of ego's directions. Be attuned to your purpose, be open to your purpose so you can fulfill the plan of heaven on earth that you came for. You are able to be the light, to become the light, to live with love, to share the truth of who you are, to serve with the blessings of God in this life, and to love with the unconditional power of understanding, to know joy in fulfilling your process of serving the one, the highest one of love and light. See every dream of who you were before you came to this planet being fulfilled by you. See all that you've been searching for and waiting for right there for you to be in this very moment. See the magnificence of your very being awakened from the dream within the dream and know that you have found who you are. You don't need to be controlled by the world. You don't need to be proving yourself in the world. You just need to accept who you are and be ever so grateful for living in that purpose. Now take another deep breath in. Let that purpose fill you, energize you, redeem you, restore you, renew you with God's unlimited love inside you. You're unlimited in that love. Now slowly come out of meditation. Breathe in that wonderful redemptive energy of finding who you are. And I'm going to close today's talk with the Aramaic version of the Lord's Prayer. Father, Mother of the cosmos, shimmering light of all, focus your light within us so we may breathe your holy breath. Enter the sanctuary of our hearts, uniting within us the sacred rays of your power and beauty. Let your heart's desire unite heaven and earth through our sacred union. Help us fulfill what lies within the circle of our lives today. Forgive our secret fears as we freely choose to forgive the secret fears of others. Let us not enter into forgetfulness tempted by false appearances. For from your astonishing fire comes the eternal song, which sanctifies all, renewed eternally in our lives and throughout creation. We seal these words in our hearts, committed in trust and faith. Amen. That concludes the day talk based on uh, Dr. Paul Leon Master's book, Spiritual Mind Power Affirmations which is available on Amazon and metaphysics.com along with the book Meditation Dynamics and Mystical Insights. I have all these shows listed to listen to for free if you go to mysticalperspectives.com. Thank you so much and may you be free to love, full of light, to fulfill your purpose here on earth. God bless you.